Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I have with me today Matt Ruain, who is the Acting Athletic Director at Belmont High School. We're going to talk about Belmont Athletics and the Fall 2 season today. But Matt, before we start, our condolences go out to the Belmont High uh, boys hockey team. Can you tell us... Uh, uh, how the season ended? Yeah, absolutely. And Roger, thanks again for having me today. Um, so as you said, uh, it, it was unfortunate. Um, our, our boys hockey team uh, for the second straight year um, are now co-champions because due to COVID, we weren't able to have a championship game. Um, this year, we had a Middlesex League tournament during February break uh, in which three of our teams were able to participate. Our boys hockey team um, played fantastic and they made a great run earning a uh, bid in the championship game. However, um, it's unfortunate to report that we had an exposure to a COVID positive case on the other team um, that we played in the semifinals. So, uh, you know, due to the direction of the Board of Health, um, you know, our Belmont Public Schools nursing department, um, it was determined that you know, the boys were um, exposed and needed to quarantine. Um, and again, unfortunately, they weren't able to play in that championship game. But, you know, hats off to them. That was a fantastic season and couldn't be more proud of them. And let, let's turn to the fall two season. Uh, first, uh, tell us what the fall two season is. What, what sports are involved? Yeah, sure. So the fall two season, um, you know, also known as the wedge season, is a um, collection of teams who weren't able to participate in their sport uh, due to MIA guidelines, um, kind of the first pass through. So for the fall sports, um, volleyball, football, girls swimming, uh, we didn't have clearance back in September, October. So they've been pushed off and now we feel like it's a safe time. We have appropriate guidelines where we can now have a modified football season, girls swimming season, um, volleyball season. We're going to have both boys and girls winter track. Uh, in the past, winter track has been in the winter, um, but now we're going to be hosting it outside during the fall two season. And we're also going to be hosting cheerleading. Um, you know, currently we're still figuring out a way for them to do competitions um, safely, um, but they will be practicing and they will be having a, a season during fall too. So winter track is normally indoors and it is during the wedge season moving outdoors. Correct. Yep. Right now, um, you know, due to limitations and also um, just working with the Middlesex League, we've decided that those teams are so big that it's safest to do it outside. Um, and with the help of Mother Nature, we'll be able to, to get them out on that track uh, sooner rather than later. Do the same rules apply as to who Belmont will be playing, that they'll be staying within the Liberty Division? Yeah, of course. Um, so again, there's, there's still no um, non-league um, interplay going on. Um, you know, we're actually keeping it just within the Liberty. Um, so similar to what we did in the winter. So, you know, we'll be playing the Winchesters, Woburns, Reddings, Lexingtons, um, you know, Arlingtons, focusing on, on keeping the cohort separate. So, you know, to minimize risk and, and, you know, back and forth between the other teams, we want to, um, you know, limit the interactions, I should say. There, there was uh, COVID exposure during, in addition to the hockey team during the, uh, the winter season. Uh, so you need to be careful. Uh, what are the special rules, if any, for practices and playing? Yeah, so, um, you know, our, our two go-tos, um, which is across the board with, with all teams, are, um, you know, wearing masks and social distancing. Um, you know, we had a very, very in-depth meeting with our fall two coaches just to go run through all the COVID guidelines, the expectations, um, how to make this the new norm for our kids at practice every day. Um, basically, we want to limit the amount of time that we're interacting. So practices are being held to 90 minutes. Um, we're also cohorting our teams. So we're not 
mixing our, our girls freshman volleyball team with the girls on the varsity team. We're keeping them separate. Um, you know, certainly we're working off the assumption that a close contact is when two players are within six feet for a cumulative 15 minutes and a 24 hour span. So we're doing as much as we can to separate, you know, our young athletes, um, making sure that we're limiting the close contact, um, you know, certainly in games, we'll, we'll do our best to do that as well. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's become the new culture here. Uh, the kids are buying in, the players are, I mean, the coaches are, are certainly adopting the new policies. So, you know, it's, it's hopefully going to move forward in a smooth fall two season. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see, but we have great people, great people here monitoring our, our kids, which is comforting. One thing as we head into the, the fall two season or the wedge season, as you uh, mentioned, is that you have now been through this a couple of times with a couple of different seasons. Uh, do you feel like you're getting better at uh, doing what you're supposed to be doing or learning lessons that you wouldn't have thought of? Yeah, so we're definitely, you know, again, this being a, a first time through um, for everyone, um, we're, we're learning a lot. Um, you know, in a lot of instances, we're erring on the side of caution. Um, you know, as we learn more about, you know, how numbers are going down and how, um, you know, we see a more promising um, spring ahead of us and, you know, everything seems to be improving. Um, we definitely don't want to get too comfortable. Um, you know, we're certainly moving forward in fall too with the, with the same, um, you know, precautions that we took in the fall and in the winter, um, you know, limited amount of practices, limited amount of games. Um, you know, certainly when we have COVID exposures or close contacts, we still have our, our teams, coaches, players go into quarantine, um, just to, again, make sure that we're not spreading this across the school and into other programs, um, trying to isolate little individual, um, cases as best we can. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we won't have too many of those in fall too, but you know, they did come up a couple of times in, in the winter season. And let's talk about spectators, uh, can you tell us what the rules are for spectators and uh, distinguish between parents and the public, if that's an appropriate distinction? Yeah, so that's a great question, Roger. Um, you know, we're still working on that. Um, you know, we're winter sports. We're all indoors. It was a lot more complicated um, bringing in spectators, viewers, parents, um, you know, just again, it being so new and us knowing that it's, it's more risky to be indoors, um, you know, with, with possible COVID cases now, because fall two will have outdoor sports, there's definitely more of a conversation, um, about what we'll be able to allow. So the MIA is approved that we can have, um, you know, a certain amount of players on the field, spectators in the stands, and we're now working together with the Middlesex teams, superintendents, ADs, to determine what policies we want to have moving forward. Um, you know, it looks like right now we're, we're discussing for outdoor sports the possibility of having, um, you know, one to two spectators, parents um, to come to games. Um, however, right now we're still dealing with the same restrictions indoors. Um, so until we learn more about that, it does not look like we'll have any spectators for indoor sports. And uh, I'm curious, you, you talk about the outdoor sports. We are in February or soon to be March uh, in New England. How does right. one play football in March <laughs> in New England? That's a great question. Um, well, certainly it's, it's going to be a challenge, um, you know, where this season spans from the end of February through the end of April, uh, we're definitely going to see a, you know, an improvement in the conditions, better weather, less snow. Um, you know, these first few weeks are going to be the most difficult. Um, you know, right now we're, we're somewhat at the mercy of mother nature, you know, crossing our fingers, hoping that this warm weather continues and we don't have any more, um, snowstorms. Um, you know, it's, it is a little complicated, um, you know, clearing off the track, clearing off the field. Uh, there's a lot of conversations that need to be had. Um, again, you know, where we want to 
create a, a space for our, our players to play. We also don't want to potentially ruin that space for future sports, um, you know, by putting a plow or, or getting a little too aggressive over there. So fortunately with yesterday's weather, today's weather, you know, it looks like it's clearing up, um, but we'll just have to deal with the snowstorms as they come. As we think about the, the risks of uh, COVID-19 uh, in athletics, uh, what are you seeing, what changes, if any, are you seeing in participation levels? So it does look like participation levels have dropped um, somewhat, you know, just looking at kind of our bigger programs, our, our track teams, our football teams, um, you know, programs that usually have upwards of 50, 60, you know, track, maybe even 80, 90, um, you know, we're definitely dealing with smaller numbers this year, um, which again, we, we completely respect and appreciate anyone's opinion of, of whether or not, you know, participating this year is, you know, in the best interest of their student. We try to come from a front of, listen, we're going to put every precaution in place and we're going to do everything we can during practices, during the games to ensure the safety of our students and coaches. Um, you know, again, though, we understand that it's, it's a pandemic and, and people are going to make their own decisions. And we just want to make sure that those who do want to participate have that option. And one final question, whenever we talk about uh, high school athletics, uh, we have to feel for the Belmont High seniors. Uh, do you have a message for the the seniors and their families? Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't be more proud of them, um, just how they've handled everything this year. Um, we know it's not the senior year that they pictured, um, you know, not just athletically, but academically, socially. Um, you know, there's a lot of sacrifices that they've had to make. Um, I think they're handling it beautifully. I know that a lot of these, you know, modifications or cancellations or just adjustments we've had to make for, you know, this 2020-2021 uh, season um, has, has been hard. And a lot of times they don't feel like they're getting the explanations that they want or that they deserve. Um, but again, they've been very mature. They've been able to see the big picture and we'll continue doing everything we can to help support them. Um, but again, I just want to say how proud I am of each and every one of them because they've been extremely cooperative this year. That's great. Thanks, uh, Matt. Uh, we've been speaking with Matt Ruane, who is the acting athletic director at Belmont High School. You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.